We're on easy street And it feels so sweet Cause the world is but a treat When you're on easy street Welcome to the Easy Street Radio Show Hosted by Rob Scribner Grab a cup of coffee and let's get started Hey, thanks for watching our video. Please take the time to like, subscribe, and share our videos all over the whole wide world. This will help us grow. Also note, buying some of our merchandise or donating to our channel is very helpful also. Thank you for supporting our show. Hello everyone, this is Ranger Rob and welcome to Easy Street. This is episode 27. Uh, I'm gonna quickly switch over to my interview I have going on. I have a gentleman named George Guzman, a good friend of mine in Washington State, and I thought it'd be interesting to talk to him to kind of address the CV situation up there and what's going on just from a local. So without further ado, here's George. Hi guys, this is Ranger Rob, and today I have George Guzman, a good friend of mine up in Everett, Washington. How are you today? Oh, pretty good there, Rob. How you doing? Pretty good. Now, I thought you would be a great person to talk to about what's going up on up there in uh, Washington State. And I, I hear it's kind of uh, getting kind of unique up there. So it's quite different than us in Arizona. So what what is your first initial thing when I ask you about the CV situation up there? Well, Rob, you know, it's uh, it's been kind of it's been very odd, for one thing. Uh, you know, we're not used to having anything that can... Uh, that can be like if this is right now. I mean, uh, uh, the CP illness has been quite uh, crazy here. <laughs> not sure exactly how to explain it more than that. Um, everything seems to be affected. Yeah, I am. Um, uh, so you're up in the Everett Everett area, and I'm from Everett too. When I lived in Washington, and you're really not that far from the shoreline and and the Kirkland and all that kind of stuff. Uh, I think you're about twenty miles away. Yeah, roughly, uh, but uh, we're we're pretty much in the trenches here because uh, Snohomish County seems to be one of the spots that uh, we've had a few a uh, few incidents. So um, it's uh, it's getting a little hairy here and there. I mean, uh, it's not the worst thing in the world, but it's uh, right now it's starting to spread. Yeah. So have you been to one of your Costco's lately? Um, I was at a Costco, and it seems as though that there is just uh, quite the a little bit, you can see a little bit of panic in everybody's eyes. Not exactly, you know, like uh, scavenger type, but uh, they are definitely trying to stock up on certain types of foods. And I still don't understand why why it's all the panic yet. Yeah. So uh, in the stores, have you what what have you noticed kind of dropping uh, out of um, inventory? Oh my goodness gracious! You would not believe. You cannot find a bottle of hand sanitizer anywhere in any store here in uh, Western Washington. <laughs> it seems as though everybody's on the run for any kind of hand sanitizer. That has been the biggest I so far. Um, now, uh, I assume you've been to the, your, your your local grocery store. Uh, are you feeling any or seeing anything different in the grocery stores? Same thing. Everybody's making a run on uh, you know hand sanitizer and toilet paper. Toilet paper seems to be the number one action item. Uh, it seems as though they, uh, they're they making a big run. I mean, Costco can't even keep them in stock. So it's been so bad. Yeah, so why do you think people need to get water? I mean, I keep hearing people get, no, get food and water, you know, and it's like, what do you I need have, water for? I think they're waiting for the apocalypse or something, <laughs> Rob, because I can tell you why they're buying all the water. It's wow. not, water's not going to run out and water's not going to be affected. So, I mean, you can get tap water out of the doggone tap and just go ahead and, uh, you know, put it in a, a filter if you want, like a Brita, and you're going to have water the whole time. So, yeah. I'm not sure about the whole bottled water thing. <laughs> so, uh, well, of course, you're in Washington, so you got lots of water anyway. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, we don't have a problem with that. So, I'm <laughs> so a little bit confused about that, so. So today is Friday uh, when I'm talking to you, and so uh, we talked yesterday. Is anything unique uh, happened today? Well, you know they've got, actually got more confirmed cases uh, of the of the CV illness, you know, and um, they are also had a few more deaths, which uh, seems to be hitting mostly the elderly. Yeah. Uh, so it's uh, been a bit of a problem for them. They've uh, put out several warnings. You know, uh, if you are sick, stay home. 
And that's the best advice you can give anybody. If you're sick, stay home. And uh, that's what they're telling everybody. Just stay home if you're sick and avoid large gatherings. You know, like if you're going to go to the, you know, some sort of concert or, or something where there's a lot of people, they're telling you, don't go, don't go. Yeah. So, and, so what's some of the, in the last couple of weeks, what are some of the routines that you, uh, you and your fiance have changed, uh, lately just for you know, daily living? Well, you know, it's funny because I don't think I've washed my hands more than I, in, the, in my entire year than I've washed my hands in the last 20 20- I'd say probably week. I mean, we are constantly washing our hands and making sure that uh, they're clean. And uh, everybody, they're asking everybody to just go ahead and make sure that you wash your hands for at least 30 seconds. Have yeah. many of the schools in Suwamish County uh, closed down at all? Yeah, actually, Rob, they have been. Uh, we've had several schools in Suwamish County shut down, as well as in King County. They actually closed an entire, what they call the North Shore District. Yeah, North yeah. School District. Is North Shore in Sohomish County or King County? No, that's in King County. And uh, the North Shore School District has actually uh, closed all its schools for two weeks. Wow. I heard that something, uh, I think they shut down the University of Washington today, didn't they? Yep, they did. Yep. Now, with all the excitement going on up there in Washington, uh, I imagine is your news inundated with the uh, uh, news about the CV disease up there? Yeah, you know, uh, it's just, it's so odd. I've never seen anything like this before. You know, uh, I've been around, you know, illnesses, but this one just seems to be such an odd one because it's, uh, it seems to be more towards the elderly, you know? Yeah. And, and the people who are actually have like uh, chronic, uh, you know, um, issues with breathing. Chronic breathing issues or that kind of thing. Anything that has to deal with breathing. Yeah. It seems to be very, very bad for them. But they're asking a lot of people to be very careful with your elderly and that kind of thing. To watch them closely. Don't go places where they shouldn't go. They keep them or keep them in a place where they, they know that they have clean air and they haven't been exposed to anything. Yeah. So it's, uh, it's more of a warning for the elderly, you know. So. Yeah, so I hear uh, a lot of people now that they're staying home and told to work from home. Uh, I hear the traffic's a lot better. <laughs> oh my gosh, Rob, the traffic is amazing! <laughs> it's amazing. It's really. Yeah, I mean, it uh, can be really bad up in the Everett area. Anything between yeah. Everett and Seattle, and you're loving it, eh? Oh yeah, loving it. Oh my gosh, you can take a, a usually a trip from in the morning from uh, Everett to Seattle's roughly about an hour and a half. Now it takes you only 30, maybe 20 or 30 minutes. That's like a miracle. <laughs> it is crazy good. It's like, wow, it's like a whole new different city without the traffic. Oh, I bet. Oh. But everybody is, I mean, literally, uh, the bigger company, I can't get detail on who they are, but uh, I'll be able to figure out that. Um, the bigger company that you know, work in Redmond and, and all over, uh, those are all kind of, Cutting down, not so much as far as what they do, but they're cutting, making everybody work from home. Yeah. So, uh, so it's easier uh, to do that. So, uh, do, do you know, uh, have you have you ate out lately or gone out to dinner or anything? Yes, I have, actually. Uh, I've actually, you know, gone to a couple of takeout places and, and a couple of uh, restaurants where I've actually sat down and minimal amount of people. You know, uh, I think the businesses are getting hit pretty hard here because of yeah so um now from the sounds of things uh just on a personal note you're, you're moving to texas in a month so you're probably happy okay. i'm getting out of here man i'm telling you <laughs> i'm not it's not because of my fear of what's going on even though i have a you know i have an illness myself but i don't uh that's not what my biggest fear is my biggest fear is that we don't want to come down with it and then all of a sudden expose you know people in el paso or something like that yeah, we're, uh, we're 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 keeping pretty tight quarters here. Yeah, you're on a you uh you actually have a medical treatment that you go in on a monthly basis, I believe. And you're now, even... actually, uh, yep, yeah, I I am Rob. I had to kind of cut it off though because it compromises my immune. 
Yeah. So uh, I had to go ahead and stop treatments for a little while just to kind of wait until this passes. Yeah, because I, I imagine with a, your immune system being low from that treatment, uh, hospitals are probably the worst place to go. <laughs> well, you know, I, I'd gone to uh, the hospital I usually go to, had some a uh, couple appointments there, but I canceled them. Due to the fact that uh, um, I'm a kind of, a, I got a little bit of fear factor in there myself. Yeah. So have you noticed that? acquaintances or friends or anybody up there that you just seen are acting a little different or are you feeling a little bit of a panic? Oh yeah. I, I, uh, I mean, a lot of my friends are still working, you know, cause they're working people, you know, they can't just stop working. Right. But a lot of them are being a little more cautious on what they do. Yeah. <laughs> there has been several, uh, even with my church, uh, there are several God where, some of the social gatherings are canceled. So, George, I understand your fiance works in the educational uh, area of uh, in school district, I believe. Yes, that's correct, uh, Rob. She does work there, and it's been kind of a, uh, a hit and miss. I mean, uh, so I understand that it, it takes a lot of money and time in order to clean classrooms, do all kinds of things there. My fiance has been very close to the center of that action. And um, that's uh, one of my main concerns. I don't need her to be getting sick or uh, bring it home to me and make me sick. So <laughs> very much, it's yeah. a little bit of a concern for both of us. So um, they're more than likely in this situation, she may have to stop working. Yeah. Now, is, uh, does she have friends or other educational people that she knows that have kind of the same concerns? Absolutely. I think the whole her whole company uh, actually has been alerted to the problem, but they are not as concerned as the employees are. So that's a big deal right now. Yeah. Now, have you heard about any um, uh, uh, quarantine or, uh, or FEMA things going on up in your area? Um, I no, not up in our area yet. However, um, the area that the elderly company, well, the elderly uh, people are staying uh, that actually contracted the, the actual CV illness, um, they are absolutely quarantined. Yeah. And there's a lot of people that are actually uh, trying to get in to see their, their parents yeah. and cannot, or are not allowed to get in. Yeah, now today I watched one report from up there and I heard they got like 15 residents out of there, but that's got to yeah. be really hard because like if if they're not going home to like their kids or family, it's like I imagine there's a lot of people just like California, they don't want that cruise ship to come in and they're all going not in my house. <laughs> yeah, well they got some they do have some quarantine type apartments set up uh for people who are uh, either testing positive and or um, been exposed. So they have basically two areas, but they're different locations on um, where they're actually keeping them. Yeah, no, it's kind of funny is uh, the one they have down in Kent. I've actually stayed there before because I was I bought a boat a couple of years ago and I had to get a motel room and I couldn't find any. And that one happened to have a room open and, I, I can tell you that place was a dump. <laughs> yeah, it it you know it it's a it looks like a trailer park, man. I'm telling you, I'm not saying it's a bad thing to have it to be in a trailer park, but I tell you what, it it just looks like a a trailer park, yeah. and uh, who knows what's going to happen with that? But uh, hey, you know, there's, I get I guess you know you got to look at the positive side. At least they're providing some sort of shelter for people who may have that. Uh, you know, contracted that the CV illness. So yeah, my understanding is the reason they liked it is each room had the independent uh, uh, air systems. Yep, absolutely. Yeah, Which so is. that's kind of why they're they're working through the the issues that way. But being in the center of it, right here, I mean, it's kind of scary. You're walking out. You're not sure who or sure who to talk to, yeah. who to actually communicate with, and nobody's shaking hands anymore. Everybody's bumping elbows <laughs> instead. You. Know? Yeah, now some of our uh, co-workers up there, which are some co-workers of mine too, 
Uh, right. Any any interesting feedback you've been getting from them? Well, you know, a lot of them have been very quiet because they've probably been told to be quiet. Yeah. Uh, just, just due to the fact that the uh, nature of the beast. Uh, and um, I don't blame them because of the fact they are uh, they're looking at it at a possible, you know, they don't want to start some sort of panic throughout the entire, uh, you know, companies that we work with all the time yeah. that we to work with. Yeah. Yeah. And that's why we're kind of trying to be nice here, too, because it's a company we, you and I both respect a lot. Oh, yeah. We do respect that company. But yes, very much so. We we do realize that, you know, they got them. I mean, there's a business aspect to all this, too. And if business doesn't work and people don't have jobs, that's going to make the problem worse. It's been a, it's been a little bit of a uh, situation there. Um, so uh, that's kind of where they're going with that. Um, they uh, they are really worried about the smaller businesses yeah. because of the fact that they uh, could lose a lot of profit. Yeah. Yeah, I saw, um, well, you know, that particular company's got a rough enough time right now with the uh, some other issues, and they certain heck don't need this. No, no, absolutely not. It's been becoming a little bit of a thorn in their side now, and uh, it's uh, getting worse. Uh, I don't mean that it would be a good thing for them to not profit from a lot of the stuff that's going on, but it seems as though it's getting... Uh, to the point where a lot of these little businesses might start dropping out and and looking for, you know, some sort of uh, aid from the government. Yeah. So have you caught any wind of uh, any of the bigger companies up there having problems with uh, inventory or getting inventory from other countries? Um. Yes, actually, I have. And I'm not going to, you know, go into detail about who they are, but uh, it's pretty well known uh, who the big guys are, who the big boys are down here. Yeah. And therefore, uh, uh, they are struggling with certain things. Um, they don't seem to be too affected, but it, it seems as though they are definitely struggling yeah, with yeah. some of the stuff that they normally could get very easily. Yeah, because I, I, I do know that so many of the places up there, not just aerospace and stuff, all have a lot of parts come in from different countries. Absolutely. And a lot of the parts we do get are from China. That's true. Yeah. So, and we say that because you and I are both retired. <laughs> so, yes, we're very not, much so. We are not there anymore. We only get to hear from people we used to work with. But we're exactly not just right. referring to one company, there's several. We have uh, shipping up there. We got people that uh, help build uh, railroads. They do all kinds of stuff. And uh, uh, supply is definitely. Uh, an issue. I bet you're just quite the scampering around to find new uh, new vendors, I bet. Oh, yeah. You wouldn't believe it. I mean, like I said, it's just, uh, it's quite, it's very unusual because I've never, I don't think anybody in Western Washington has ever experienced something like this where it's uh, it's actually so quickly spread that it, uh, it affects everything, every aspect of what we do every day. Yeah. It affects. So, you know, I, I was thinking about your move that's coming up in a, in a month or so. So, you know, obviously you've got a moving truck and you're going to be heading down there and stuff. But I bet you, have you started thinking about what you have to do differently now that you've got to travel from Washington to Texas and you've got to stop at all these places? What are the new things you're thinking about that you wouldn't normally think of? Well, you know, I, I, I've got to say that I, I, I got to wonder about the cleanliness in some places. You know, I've got to be very careful about what I touch. Yeah. About any of us touch. Um, it seems as though uh, we're going to be so loaded down with hand sanitizer and, and gloves. Yeah, yeah. And lots of gloves because we have gloves uh, that we're going to make a very good push to make sure we're very careful about where we go and what we do. So uh, all of our lunches are going to be made here at my house. Yeah. And, and then we're going to be, like I said, snacks, things like that. We're going to be very careful about the way we, we handle a lot of the thing. Yeah. Driving is not going to be much of a problem. No. We're going to drive down there, do what we have to do. Maybe stop by and say hello to Ranger Rob. <laughs> you bet. And, uh, and then move forward. But uh, <laughs> we don't have uh, a real 
a big plan to do anything much different other than, you know, staying clean. Yeah. Now, if you show up at the house with a hazmat sh- a suit, I'm going to be offended. <laughs> well, we're definitely going to have something, maybe a, maybe a body wrap or something like That's that. That's right. <laughs> Oh man! So um, I saw one online, but it's not very appropriate. <laughs> so, uh, uh, what are some of the things you've noticed up there that you wish people would do a little bit better? Uh, well, I have to say, um, I'm very disappointed in uh, the way things have been handled throughout some of the school districts. Mm. I think uh, North Shore, I have to give give a little bit of bravo to North Shore School District for closing their schools for two weeks to sanitize and clean and make sure that their students are safe. Yeah. I can't say that for all the rest of the school districts because they seem to be little at a time. Some of them close, some of them don't. I mean, I just just don't think that they're taking it as seriously as they should. Yeah. Have you noticed uh, very much hoarding up there? People buying. Uh, too, that again, Rob? Have you heard much on hoarding up there? People buying too much stuff, or maybe buying it and oh, reselling it. Oh well, they're it? trying to, but a lot of the the actual stores are not allowing them to buy more than a certain amount. Oh, good. So yeah, that's crazy. However, you know, there's always a little bit of price gouging here and there, but uh, most of the items that are sold are pretty much at the same price where we where we buy them. Gotcha. Well, hey, uh, I want to take the time to thank you very much for yakking with us. I'm now sharing. Uh, uh, air, all of us are kind of blind in all these other states. Like, what's it really like up there in Washington? And uh, uh, I, I probably, I wouldn't be surprised in a few weeks, either it gets better or maybe it gets worse. And I'd love to talk to you again. Absolutely. I, I My under, understanding of it, uh, having been in the medical profession as well, uh, that uh, epidemics like this uh, usually get worse before they get better. Yeah. So, uh, hey, I want to thank you and your fiance for putting up with uh, uh, having to do the Skype today. We had a little trouble with connection today, but we uh, we kind of finished off really good, though. But I do appreciate your patience and, and talking to us. No problem, uh, Rob. I appreciate you calling me and uh, uh, giving a little chat here. You bet. So uh, stay on the line here, and I'm going to close up the show here, and uh, I'll be right back. Okay, sounds good. All right, thanks, George. All right, you're welcome. And we're back. I want to thank George Guzman very much for the interview. We apologize for a little bit of an audio problem we're having with Skype. Uh, we moved him around a couple of times in the room and put a tinfoil uh, underwear on him, and uh, he started <laughs> it started transmitting better. So, yeah, kind of frustrating. But, uh, yeah, Washington State, uh, we actually monitor uh, King 5 News up there from here in Arizona. And uh, boy, they're, you know, it seems that they're trying hard to keep people informed. Uh, some good decisions, some bad, some frustrated people, uh, totally understandable. Here in uh, Arizona, uh, Sherry and I just got back from Safeway, our uh, grocery store nearby. And we actually tried real hard to kind of see how well things were stocked there. And frankly, it looked really well. Um, all the toilet paper areas and stuff, uh, plenty of supplies. We checked hand sanitizer. There was a few there. Um, and as far as like uh, alcohol and stuff like that, there was actually a little bit there. So uh, the hoarding doesn't seem to be too terribly bad or we just hit Safeway right after they just got uh, some uh, inventory. And in So that's a good thing there. Um, probably this weekend, just for the humor of it, we might go to Costco and get another uh, look at that. We are running out know, last week when we were there and I reported uh, uh, they were out of toilet pa- all paper products uh, by 1030 in the morning. So, yeah, there are definitely people uh, hoarding, but um, no need for that. And I mean, how much I mean, cal- do some calculations. People went like toilet paper. You know, how much do you go through in a week and then times it out by uh, four and a half, four and a third? And uh, that'll kind of tell you what you need to have for per month. And you'll probably find that buying, a, you know, four cases is not quite necessary. Um, and then when it comes to hand sanitizer, a lot of people are just buying isopropyl alcohol, 
what you can mix with water and actually make uh, I think you could maybe mix it with some soap too and make your own hand hand sanitizer so yeah uh, you can make do uh, if it really just get you keep going to the store and not able to get stuff you can make some of your own stuff and uh, just get in the habit of uh, you know, anything it had to do with cleaning it was definitely a no uh, shortages they weren't gone but definitely uh, a lot the, the the shelves were not empty <laughs> and uh yeah so uh, uh the other thing i was kind of concerned about is uh, i've talked to you earlier that we just dealt with uh Sher sherry's father passing away and her mother moved down here and we got her all set up in a assisted living and so we feel the pain here um definitely with the folks uh, up there in uh, uh kirkland where they have the assisted living and uh, what you know that's a tough scenario uh some of those folks need the care and they can't be at home because their care is uh you know what well, they could be at home but the problem is is most folks like us are working and and we have jobs and things like that and to also be a full-time caregiver is tough so uh those poor families dealing with the scenarios that they have to uh, they have it rough and so you really put need to uh, have empathy for those folks and yet I understand that you know the you know uh, some of them don't feel like they're being informed very well and they care about their mothers and fathers that are there uh, it's a real balancing act so I definitely would be just as concerned and, and I truly I truly understand uh, just how frustrating that probably is all right, guys, I want to thank you very much for watching Easy Street. Uh, this is, was episode 27. We look forward to seeing you next time. I want to thank George Guzman once again for uh, doing an interview with us. And uh, we'll have another show out shortly. So uh, don't forget, you can catch us on Good Talk Radio. Uh, you can get us on Spotify. You can get us on Spreaker. Just go down to the description below and find all the different ways you can find the show and also find out how to listen to Good Talk Radio. So until next time, thanks for listening and bye now. Thank you very much for watching our video. Please take the time to like, subscribe, and share our videos all over the whole wide world. Thanks.